Uh, okay, good morning. So let us, as usual, solve uh, the problems in homework and then we continue the lesson. So let us read the first problem. So if alpha and beta are such that 2 times sine 2 alpha plus beta equals to 3 times cosine 2 alpha times cosine beta, then tangent 2 alpha plus tangent beta equals 2. Of course, I see some people uh, do approximations in some of my questions, but when I don't say anything, I mean exact value should be written here, okay? So, how should we solve the problem? I think this problem is fairly straightforward. So, question number one, we are given that uh, 2 sine 2 alpha plus beta is equal to 3 times cosine 2 alpha cosine beta, yes? <clears throat> and then we want to find tangent 2 alpha plus tangent beta. This is wanted. Okay, so what do you think it's good to do? Yes? Yeah, there's nothing that we can do much. We just expand this. And that is the addition formula for sine. So you don't know that. You can just put the formula sheet in front of you. So, But I have it in my memory, so it becomes 2. Sine of the sum of two angles is the sine of the first one multiplied by cosine of the second one plus the other way around. Sine of the second one multiplied by cosine of the first one. Okay. So you, you shouldn't be in a hurry. For example, you shouldn't immediately start using the formula for cosine 2 alpha. There are formulas of, in the formula sheet for cosine 2 alpha, but probably that shouldn't be needed. Why? Because the question mark is asking you about tangent 2 alpha plus tangent beta. So 2 alpha remains the same even in the question. So there is no point that if I want to use the formula for sine 2 alpha or cosine 2 alpha, this is useless. And then I will copy and paste this part. Okay. Then the next step is, of course, to multiply this number in. And there is one more step to the problem. If you can recognize that, then the problem is done, more or less. Yes. So what do you think? So there is nothing that I can help you to, to understand this step now. I mean, you might say that I need tangent to alpha somehow. In order to have tangent to alpha, sine to alpha is not enough. I need also cosine to alpha. But where do I need cosine to alpha? Below exactly sine to alpha. And then I would say that, okay, in my question mark, tangent beta is also involved. So tangent beta is sine beta, but not alone. I need a cosine beta below that. I mean, if you think in that way, might be immediately motivated to do what? Divide. To divide both sides by this combination, yes? If I divide both sides by that combination, so this becomes 2 sine 2 alpha, sine cosine beta divided by that expression cosine 2 alpha cosine beta and then I will have 2 sine beta cosine 2 alpha and then divided by cosine 2 alpha cosine beta and then what is left for me on the right hand side so let me don't write it yes this expression divided by this part is just simply but then I achieve the goal, yes? Why? Because first of all, this is gone. And that is exactly the combination that I need, which is tangent to alpha. So then what happens? It becomes 2 tangent to alpha. And plus, here what happens? This will cancel that one. But then sine beta over cosine beta is again the combination that I need. So this becomes 2 tangent alpha, yes? 
and then what is left on the right side is three, but my question mark is the same combination without. So uh, I want that combination, uh, so I have to divide by two. So when I divide by two, so I get tangent to alpha, tangent alpha is equal to three over two. Of course, if you want to, I have given two answers to, G, uh, to exam .net. So if you write 1.5 is correct, 1 comma 5 is also correct. And 3 over 2, you have to use this slash key so that you can write 3 over 2. So remember, if, if you need to do fractions, you can just type it like that. Okay. Of course, I cannot guess any other scenario. You might invent some kind of... So you, some people write three divided by two in words. Yes, I couldn't guess everything. But of course, I will also correct it manually. Okay. Yeah. But don't do very weird things, okay? Okay, so this is the first question. So it was not hard. Every question, if you could solve it, good. If you couldn't, you need to ask yourself why I couldn't solve the problem if you have really spent time and worked on it. Okay? This attitude you should develop so that you can become a good problem solver. Yes. Okay, so let us go to the next question. The next question, everything I think is in the figure. Yeah, okay. So consider the following figure. And if the height dh, which is a different color, expressed in its lower terms, lowest terms, it means that it is as simplified as possible is 1 plus m over square root of n centimeters, where m and n are integers, then you are supposed to calculate this square root of m plus n and type it here. Okay? So let us see how the problem goes. I will pause recording, but please remind me to <laughs> again unpause it, okay? Okay, so now uh, we are supposed to uh, solve this problem. Okay, so if you don't mind, let me clean this one. Hopefully you don't need it anymore. Okay, so the problem, by the information given in the picture, somehow you want to calculate the length of the edge. Yes, that's the whole point. Of course, because I want to make it in a way that uh, exam.net can correct it, so I have given a little bit twist to the problem, but that is minority. The main problem is to calculate the length of this orange line. Okay, do you have any suggestions? Mm -hmm. Hmm? You can find like AC first week. Yes, no, no, the, the grand picture. A, finding AC, finding AD are the details, but what is your goal? If, I wouldn't say it is very hard that you see if, because you know that these angles are somehow given, and then you are, const you, are, you are supposed to find the length of the H, it shouldn't be hard, at least, to see that this might be a good idea to work on this right angle triangle. Yes? It's not hard, yes? But the problem is that, if I write that, the, the whole angle is how much? Alpha plus beta. And because this orange line is opposite to this, either tangent should be useful or sine. Cosine is not that useful. Okay, but if I want to use tangent, then I need to know the adjacent side as well, which I don't have any idea about. It might be, might be I can calculate, but I don't know. But this one is given to be 3, not that one. So it might motivate me, instead of focusing on using tangent, let us use sum. Okay? These are just the way I think. It doesn't mean that I know how to solve the problem from the beginning. Okay? So what I will do, I would say that, okay, sine alpha plus beta, I know about, I, I can write something in front of it, which is not that bad, because it is related to what I want somehow. Okay, so sine alpha plus beta is the opposite side, which is d, what? h over the hypotenuse, which is a. Okay, so don't get confused. So there are a lot of things that you don't know in this equation because alpha is not given, beta is not given, okay? dh is what I want, it is not given, ad is not given, okay? But at least you know that your goal is to calculate dh, so I multiply everything by ad, 
this becomes that. And then the question becomes more or less clear. My strategy becomes clear. In order to answer my question mark, I need to know this and I need to know that. Okay. If I know these things, I multiply them, I get the H. Okay. About this one, let us talk a little bit later. But is there any way that I can calculate AD? It shouldn't be very hard. I mean, this is even grown the school on problem. Yes? You want to find the length of AD, you have two right angles, triangle, glued one to one another. Yes? So how can I do that? This length is given to be 3. This length is given to be 1. So this hypotenuse I can immediately calculate. So if you don't mind, let me write it with a different color on it. So what is the length of this one? Can you tell me? This one is squared, Pythagoras theorem. This one is squared, this one is squared. I should add them up and take a square root. So it becomes what? Root 3 to power 2 plus 1 to power 2, which is root 10. Are you okay? Okay. But now, I want to find AD, of course I will do another time here, then I will find the hypotenuse, yes? So because this one is the hypotenuse of the new right angle triangle, so what should I do? In order to find that, I take this number, square it, I take this number, square it, add it to the previous one and take another square root. Understandable? Okay, but the square root of 10 to power 2, 10, 2 to power 2, 4, so it is a square root of 14. 14. Okay, so this question mark is done. As simple as that. Then I need to find sine alpha plus beta. That is why it is related to this lesson. So far I haven't used this lesson. This is the uh, right angle triangle trigonometry. But now hopefully you understand that there is something we can do about sine alpha plus beta because we have a formula here. So if you don't mind, let me continue like this. Instead of this one, I put the square root of 14. I just found it. And then I have the formula for addition. So it becomes sine alpha times cosine beta plus the other way around. And now immediately it becomes simple, yes? Because sine alpha, alpha is one of the angles in this right angle triangle. Probably this is the simplest possible problem now, yes? Sine alpha in this right angle triangle is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Opposite side is 1. Hypotenuse is already calculated. Yes? And then multiplied by cosine beta. Beta appears in this upper right angle triangle. It is a steep right angle triangle. So what is cosine beta? It is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side, we already calculated, is square root of 10 divided by square root of 14. And then do the other way around, plus sine beta. I go to this triangle again. Sine beta is opposite by hypotenuse. So it becomes 2 over a square root of 14. Multiply cosine alpha in this right angle triangle is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Adjacent is also given in the problem from the beginning divided by the hypotenuse. Are you with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here, this is square root of 10. We cancel that square root of 10. And then I multiply square root of 14. Because now, if you look at the problem, I want to write it in this form. Yes? Because let me show you again. So this, uh, this one, it's given to be this. So I need to write it somehow in that way. So this one is a little bit motivating what to do. Yes? What should I do? I multiply this square root of 14 in. Because as soon as I multiply square root of 14 in, this square root of 14 will just cancel that square root of 14, I get my 1 that I needed, yes? So this becomes what? 1 plus the square root of 14 should also be multiplied here, but square root of 14 will cancel this square root of 14. What is left for me is 2, 3, square root of 10. So it becomes 6 square root of Okay? 
Uh, are you? Okay. okay. And then this is exactly in that form, and it is in the lowest term. Okay. So it means that this is your M, this number is your N, but the problem is asking you about what? Square root, square root of M plus N. So it becomes square root of 6 plus 10, which is the square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is? Okay, so you see, it, I try to motivate you how to think about the problem because it doesn't matter how many problems you solve. You need to take, you need to uh, learn lessons. So you have to think about the problem, and if you succeed, it's good. If you don't, then you will feel this thirst. If uh, on, uh, what, what is the answer, and then when it is revealed to you it will go to your brain and remains there for a longer time. Okay, so that's the whole point. Anyway, this is also this problem. Now the last problem. Uh, so I don't know why you didn't do that, Jose, because you, I, I you, you told me, ah, you didn't, ah, okay, so you, I, 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 didn't saw you, uh, your, I didn't see your answer there. Anyway, so let us go to the pr next problem. Uh, the next problem is, let theta be an angle between 0 degrees and 180 degrees strictly. If tangent theta is minus the square root of 5 and for some integer m, tangent theta over 2 is equal to the square root of 5 plus the square root of m over 5, then what is m? Okay? I mean... Oh, as I told you that, whenever I don't mention something like that, I need exact values. Okay, so you can think a little bit, I can prepare it here and then we can work it out together. Yes. So now, a theta, be careful here, the theta is given between 0 and 180 degrees. It, it means it is either in the first or second quadrant. But which one is that? Second, because now the next piece of information is telling you tangent is a negative number, so it cannot be in the first. Okay, but this, still, uh, this is needed. Yes? Okay, and then they are telling you tangent theta over 2 is some combination like this, and then you're supposed to find your m. Okay, so what should I do, do you think? We had, if you remember, this is not exactly that problem, but the idea... We had this idea before in one of the identities I proved last time. If I remember, this was the identity. Do you remember something like this? I asked you in the previous homework to prove. Yes? And I told you if you remember the solution of the problem, uh, usually we sacrifice tangent, but the usual way didn't work that time. But then I asked myself, how can I find a strategy? I realized, okay, the difference, the main difference, of course, this is the very big difference between them, but the main difference is that the angle involved here is x, the angle involved on the other side is x over 2. So it motivated me to get rid of these x's in favor of x over 2, if you think in that way, then you re it reminds you about finding the connection between double angle formulas. Okay? So you see, this problem is completely different from that problem, but they, they have some ideas in common. Yes? Here, the piece of information given to you is about theta. What you want to find is a, something about theta over 2. This problem is different from that problem, but the key idea is not that different. Is that clear? Okay, so that, that is the key points that you have to take on from homeworks. No one will remember all the details of all problems, yes? Okay, so what we'll do, what I will do is trying to see that, can I use that experience from that problem here? Okay, so what should I do? I, my goal actually is to calculate tangent theta over 2, yes? Because if, if I give you this number, say 5, 7, whatever, finding m is extremely simple. You solve an equation and find m. So the main goal for me is to use these pieces of information to find this number. As soon as I have this number, finding m is just a minority. Yes, it's a very simple problem. Okay, so what should I do? So I start thinking about how can I calculate this, okay? Okay, what do you think? I have my way of doing it, but 
Yeah, your way is correct. So if you don't mind, so let us everyone else uh, participate. Okay. So what do you think I will do? Because in Swedish system, I told you there are no formulas for addition and subtraction for tangent. So it means that there are no formulas for tangent of double angles. So if you want to say something about tangent of double angles or half of the angles, you have to do it through sine and cosine. Okay? Because you don't have a separate formula for that. Okay, so what do I do? I would say that, okay, let me write this in a way that sine and cosine appear. Because then I can say something, okay? So then I will start from here. I will write sine theta, cosine theta, equals to minus the square root of 5. As soon as you understand to write this, this is very comparable to the problem of the previous week, yes? Now you need to know how can I write this and that in a way that instead of having theta, I have theta over 2. If you have this in mind, this would be a matter of second and you have progressed. If you don't have anything of this idea in mind, it means this problem is completely new problem for you. Okay? And the chances of solving completely new problems are usually low. Okay? So now do you remember what I told you about how can I get rid of sine theta in a way that I can see theta over 2 in the problem? There is one formula in the formula sheet, but it is written in this way. Yes? But you know, you have to learn and remember that how can I use this formula to connect uh, angles with half angles? How can I do that? This doesn't tell you that it should be 2 V and V V. It tells you what angle you have here. Half of it you have it here, half of it you have it there, okay? So this means that if I ask you what is sine theta, what do you say? Now, theta is sitting instead of 2v. So I can, if I want to, I can write it as 2 sine, but what should I write? Half of this angle, okay? Cosine half of that angle. Okay, so that is done. So I will write 2 sine theta. For the time being, I don't have any clue what I'm doing. You see, I want you to feel that I am also lost. But I have one strategy to make theta over 2 appear in my problem. Okay, so I'm following that strategy. Might be it is not useful. Then, of course, I have to cross it over and think another way. Okay, but at least don't give up so easily. Okay, so do the same thing for cosine. So if you want to do the same thing for cosine, which formula from formula sheet probably you will need? Cosine of double angle formula, yes? So there are three formulas here for cosine. Let me write them for you. But let me, I don't know which, you have to have a little bit of practice to see which one is su suitable. These are three formulas that you see in the formula sheet for cosine. Which one do you think is suitable here? The first one is the best one, okay? But of course, you have to see a little bit. But at least, can you tell me what should I write? Now you have experience of sine. I want you to tell me what should I write for cosine theta. This is theta. This is 2v. This is v. This is v. The interpretation is important. Whatever angle you have here, you have half of it here, half of it there. So can you tell me what can I write for cosine theta? Cosine half of theta squared minus sine half of theta squared. And on the right hand side, I have minus the square root of 5. Okay. You might say that, oh, what can I do? This is just a very bad mixture of sine and cosine. But this is a very simple answer. Okay. I want to wait for you again. There have been few occasions that I am using the trick. I, I, I use the trick that I'm going to use now. So it shouldn't be hard for you. Can you do something? Because what I need is tangent of theta over 2. Instead of tangent of theta over 2, I have a mixture of sine theta over 2 and cosine theta over 2. I would call it a progress because at least theta over 2 appears. But then unfortunately it becomes a little bit messy, yes? So what do you think I will do? Because my goal now 
is to do something that tangent theta over 2 appears so I can say something about it. What should I do? Yes? Cosine theta over 2? Cosine theta over 2, no. Not both sides. You mean the up and down. Okay? But cosine theta over 2 is close, but not exactly. Let us do that. If I do, if I divide by cosine theta over 2, what happens? This will go away and this will be left. This is not what I need. I need tangents. So what should I do? Anyone else? I want to see how much my explanation helps. <laughs> yes. It doesn't help at all? Okay. So, what? Did you understand? Yes? Maybe to get rid of cosine theta over 2 in the denominator. No, what is your suggestion? She said divide by cosine theta over 2 first. It is not working because if I divide the numerator by this combination, this is gone, I agree, but this is left. This is not what I want to be left. I want to somehow, yes? Maybe uh, get convert sine theta over 2 squared to cosine. Here? Yes. Or here? No. Okay, no, but then what? Let us say, yes, let us say we, we did it. Okay? And then I still have a mixture of sine cosine up and either sine or cosine down. Yes? But then what? Yes, Omar? If you multiply by cosine over 2, I'm... If I multiply by cosine over 2, I'm making the problem harder, because then it will increase the power here. Nothing? Just expand your point of view. <laughs> She was very close. She said to divide cosine theta over 2. You see, this is a matter of seconds to understand. She said divide cosine by theta over 2. What was the weakness of that? Because when you do that, what is left? Sine. You want to have tangent. In order to have tangent, what you need below sine? Cosine. So you have to divide by what? Yes, a square of that cosine. Yes, that's it. Yes, so what you divide, you say that, let me, if you don't know it, let me do it step by step. But it is pointless if you don't try to remember. So we divide the numerator, not but what she said in the beginning, but now by this corrected version. Yes, and then, okay, can you tell me how divide, how, I, how do I divide the denominator? You can write one fraction line and then divide, but there are two terms, you can divide them separately. Separately is better here, yes? So I will divide the first term by this one. And I can divide the second one by the same thing. First of all, I want you to understand that this is logical. Can you feel that what I have done is right? So I have rescaled my fraction by this coefficient. Is that right? For example, if I give you 5 plus uh, 7 divided by, I don't know, 9 plus 2, I, if I ask you to divide everything by 3, what do you do? So let me write it like 5 times. If I ask you to divide by 3, you write 5 times 7 divided by 3. Here you can say 9 plus 2 divided by 3, or if you want to, you can write 9 plus over 3 plus 2 over 3. So this is a simple arithmetic. Yes, that's the same thing here. Okay, but now, why this is useful? By the way, I have to copy and paste because I have going in a vertical way. So the left, the right-hand side is still the same. But now, hopefully, you see what is happening. What's happening? One of these cosine and one of these cosines are gone. So one cosine is left. And that is good because now sine theta over 2 divided by cosine theta over 2 is exactly tangent theta over 2 that I want to. Okay, so I will write it 2 tangent theta over 2 and then divided by. What happens here? Just 1. The number divided by itself. But what happens here? Sine of, of, of an angle divided by cosine of the angle to power 2. So it becomes again what? 
tangent theta over 2 but squared. And then I have minus the square root of 5. Okay? My experience is that still if you come to this point, you wander around. You might be still confused. Yes? Let me test this idea. What should I do next? For, for, for a person who has followed mathematics regularly, this is a relief. How? I have mentioned this several times. What do I want to calculate? Tangent. Okay, so I have one unknown. What do I have? I have one piece of information regarding exactly that unknown. So this is the way I think. So I'm not letting myself to be distracted from the, because it is complicated. The problem is not complicated. It has disguised itself like a cat, you know. It actually makes it bigger that you become scared. But that's the same thing, no? It's the same. It's a, 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 so in principle, a math 2 C student should be able to solve this problem. Because what is your, yes? Yes, because tangent theta over 2 is your unknown, so it doesn't hurt if you call it x. Yes? Okay, so what I would write, I will write that 2x, 1 minus x squared is equal to minus the square root of 5. Now, in principle, I, when I reach to this point, I can take the deep breath and I say, okay, the problem is solved. Okay, because I know that x is missing and I have one piece of information. But the problem is that if you have forgotten the previous lessons, Every step is a new problem. You will, you will lose your breath because there is no time for you to take your breath in, you know? So then you will die. So we will continue and solve this problem. So how should I solve the problem? Hopefully everyone knows to do that, yes? Okay, tell me, everyone. Okay, you can say together so that I don't see which one is <laughs> making mistake, okay? So what should I do now? Yes, everyone? Everyone? What should I do here? Multiply by one yes, I always tell you I hate fractions. Follow me. Believe me, you also hate fractions, okay? Even if you don't know. Okay, so you multiply everything by this combination to get rid of that. Okay, so what happens? It becomes minus square root of 5 times 1 minus x squared is equal to 2x. Are you happy with this? Yes or no? Okay, and then expand. It becomes what? Square root of 5x squared minus the square root of uh, 5 equals to 2x. But you know it's quadratic equation, so don't waste the time. So what do you do? Move. You move it to the other side, and then you have minus the square root of 5 equals to 0. Yes? Are you happy? Very. Okay, now because we want to find x. So what should I do now? I need to use either ABC formula or PQ formula. Okay? Uh, which one do you think is good here? We can test both. I have a feeling that PQ formula is better here. You know why? Because when I, uh, for PQ formula, I have to divide by square root of 5. The good thing is that this square root of 5 is gone. Another square root of 5 up there is also gone. They turn into 1. Of course, I will get a little bit problem here. It becomes minus 2 over square root of 5. At least instead of having 2 square root of 5s, I have 1. And the good thing is that I have an even number here. So this is my feeling that let me go towards the PQ formula and I appreciate that one this time. Okay, so what I will do, I divide everything by square root of 5. Yes? And then, of course, you know the formula in the formula sheet. So it is minus P over 2 plus or minus the square root of P over 2 squared minus Q. Yes? So, what should I write? It becomes minus p over 2. Okay, tell me in your head immediately. What is minus p over 2 in this problem? It's minus 2 plus 1 over root 5. Plus, yes, you divide this by 2, 2 is gone. So it becomes minus 1 over square root of? Plus. Oh, plus, yes, yes. And then plus or minus, whatever this number is, you square it. It becomes 1 over 5. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, and then minus q, which becomes plus 1. Okay? You don't need to think, yes? 
for the time being, I, you know, I don't think immediately. I get rid of this, then I will think. So what happens here? Can you do it in your head? 1 over 5 plus 1 is 6 over 5. So it becomes the square root of 6 over 5. But now this is the time to look what I, am, what I want to do. I want to make the combination similar to this. Okay? Is it hopeful or not? Hopeful. Yes. So it, if you look here, then might be it motivates you to do something. What do you do? Mm. What should I do with this bad combination? Split the square root. So it becomes square root of the numerator. Yes? Plus or minus square root of 6 over square root of 5. How many of you have problems with this? None of you. But you have to use your knowledge. And then the denominators are the same. Okay? I will take the common denominator because I want to have one single fraction. So you see, I am looking back and forth to know what to do. Who knows what should I do? I have to look it up. Yes? So it becomes square root of 5, 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. Then I have two new problems. One problem is that which sign I should choose. The second problem is that it's a little bit more annoying. I want 5 in the denominator. So then at this level might be some... Uh, Bad thoughts come to your mind. Okay, no, I lost the track. It should be square root of five. It should be five square root of five. But then again, you remember there is one simple thing to do to go from square root of five to five. So it's not a big problem. The big problem is it's still plus or minus. Of course, you can say that no, I see it is plus. I will choose the plus. But let us say you didn't see that. They are really asking you to calculate without giving you the right-hand side. Which one do you choose and why? Yes? Why? Because it's not first quadrant. What? What is it in the first quadrant? No. Theta? So, yes, you understood that theta is in the first quadrant, yes? I mean, theta over 2 is the first quadrant. Definitely, yes. Yes. Even if theta is in the second quadrant, which is, of course, not. No, theta is in the second quadrant, by the way. Yeah. Theta itself is in the second quadrant because we know that theta is from the first quadrant to the second. Tangent is negative, so it is in the second quadrant. But this is x is not tangent theta. It's tangent of theta over 2. If theta is between 0 and 180, theta over 2 is between 0 and 90. So theta is in the second quadrant, but theta over 2 is in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, I have to choose the positive one. Why? Because 1 minus the square root of 6 is negative. So it means that now I understand that the other one is not acceptable. So I have this one. Uh, so I have this one. Uh, what? So tangent theta over 2 is finally 1 plus the square root of 6 over square root of 5. But do you remember in the problem this was given? Tangent theta was square root of 5 plus the square root of m over 5. So what should I do now? I have to do something that this becomes 5. But again, this is simple. What is supposed to do? This I told you before. It is called rationalization of the denominator. Yes? You have to get rid of the third sign in the denominator. So what was the rule? Scale to rescale it by the same number. Yes? And now, in the denominator, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. And in the numerator, I multiply this here, square root of 5. And I multiply it here, the square root of 30. And now compare it with this one. What is your m? m is your m is 30. Yes? Yes? Why didn't you also do it on the right hand side? No, no, no. I if you if I wanted to do it on the right hand side, then I am not allowed to do it in the denominator. Because um, because, let me say something like this. If you have a fraction equals to 5, I can decide to divide A by 2, not B, and then I divide 5 by 2. But if I divide A 
and b by 2, I don't divide the right hand side. Yes? No, because the reason is clear. Because 2 and 2 are gone, I have a over b back. So instead of a over b, I have written a over 2, b over 2. Don't get confused. Forget about this. What I am doing, I am writing another name for only a over b, independent of what is on the right hand side. Yes? But if you want, so these kinds of arithmetic that I am doing, you shouldn't, if, if, if you have puzzle, you have to write it down and think about it, understand it once we're all. Yes, if that is really your problem. So you really need to understand this calculation is valid, this calculation is valid, but not both simultaneously. Okay, any questions? Okay, so uh, I want you to learn how to think because otherwise it is useless. It doesn't matter how many problems we solve if you don't learn how to think. Any questions about the quiz, uh, about the homework? Okay, so let me stop this video. We were lucky this time, hopefully everything works fine. <laughs>